Profiles journalist Matt Taibbi found himself in a spat on X with journalist Zed Jelani over the kinds of stories that he chooses to report on. Now, he explained why his focus has shifted to covering threats to free speech that come from the Democratic establishment, saying there is an enormous army of mainstream media reporters already going after them from almost from every angle, with most major news organizations, little more than proxies for the DNC, to the point where stations hire Biden spokespeople as anchors. The Democrats' ambitions are significantly more dangerous than those of the Republicans. Zed Jelani is a former reporter at The Intercept, and he criticized Taibbi writing on X, you're just rationalizing, pandering to the millions of right-wing subscribers, to the millions that right-wing subscribers give you. And then Brianna and I earlier in the week had a kind of debate discussion about this where I tried to you know, characterize what Taibbi's arguments were. Better than having me do it, let's just have him on. Matt is a frequent guest uh, on our show, and we thought it'd be much better to just have you get into you know, how your thinking has evolved, what kind of stories you like to cover, and respond to this, uh, some of this criticism you got from Zed and from Brianna. So Matt Taibbi, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me on. Robin yeah, Brown. yeah, very, Appreciate very it. good to have you here. Um, you know, I, I also wanted to, you know, make sure that because that tweet that allegedly contained, you know, what your thinking was, was that a fair characterization of of how, yeah. of how you think and, and what your reporting's doing? Yeah, that was a uh, Substack note, so it was verbatim. They just put it on Twitter. Oh, okay, um, that's that's helpful to know. Yeah. So, Matt, I understand that you think that I and Zed Jelani and my attempt to um, articulate what Zed Jelani's position was got some things wrong. Where do you think we aired? Well, um, Brianna, I mean, I, obviously, I don't I don't want to be difficult about this, but there were a bunch of things on your show. Uh, that uh, that were I thought were concerning. Number number one, um, you, know, you said that I waited a year to tell everybody what happened with uh, Elon. I, I actually didn't do that. I announced it the day that it happened um, in a, an article that I know that you you read because you've referenced it on the air before. Uh, I talked about being placed under a blanket search ban and all the other things that had been done, including the removal of uh, the Twitter file story. So the notion that I didn't tell the world that is, uh, you know, an inf influential journalist had been censored, um, that's not true. I've done that repeatedly in the last year and I did it as soon as it happened in my, in my case. Uh, it's also not true that I've declined to criticism, uh, criticize him uh, in the past year uh, and, and that I've still declined to do so. I've done it fairly regularly, as a matter of fact. Uh, some of those instances have actually kind of gone viral. Uh, I gave an interview to Chris Cuomo, for instance, where I talked about how he's been a big disappointment on free speech. Uh, I've gone after him on his own platform, uh, you know, calling him out multiple times in the last year. Uh, another thing that I found was concerning you, you, you said that when I was declining to answer questions, for instance, uh, that things that uh, Mehdi Hassan was a asking me about, say, for instance, Elon's speech policies with India, you said that the Twitter file searches had been done and that as far as you understood it, uh, we had gotten them all in one cache at the beginning of the process. I, I don't know where you got that from. I'm actually curious to ask because that wasn't the case. We had multiple, uh, it was dozens of different uh, document really, uh, uh, dumps, and we were getting them at different times, and I was actually due to get results uh, right up until the moment that Elon had his meltdown and I was cut out of the process. Let's take uh, those so two. Let's, let's take both of those, Tybee. So 100%, I'm not as clear on the timeline of how these things happened as you, but the core point that I was articulating and that I think was reflected in some of the pushback that you've been getting is that we have from you and yeah, me- those, those, aren't, those aren't core point issues, those are fact issues. Completely, I completely concede them. I, I have no investment in, the, in, in a misstatement that I made. So I wanna to get to what I, what I meant, you know, so I completely concede. But the, the core issue from my perspective is not the specific timeline, which I completely accept, I may have misrepresented or misremembered, but the, the, your own statement in the uh, text messages that you released between you and Elon Musk, in which you said, quote, Elon, I've repeatedly declined to criticize you and I have nothing to do with your beef on Substack. So can you appreciate how people could read a statement like that and say, well, obviously at some point, Matt Taibbi had criticisms of Elon Musk that he chose not to make public 
And, and maybe there's a very good journalism reason for you to, th to think, I'm doing this so that I can get more tr Twitter files. Yeah, we'll, That's completely we'll, reasonable, we'll, we'll, we'll but we'll that is that also a, a negotiation, Bri right? Brianna, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment, but you also went into a whole tirade about how I waited a year uh, to release the information that I had been censored, and that is just totally factually Wait, so un what, what untrue. What I was referring to was that you this- You also Well, let me, let me clarify. Well, well, Matt Tate, I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't mean to argue with you. I have no- Investment. I have no interest in attacking you or making you look bad. If I got something wrong, let's talk about it. So what I was pointing to, and correct me if I'm wrong, this isn't this doesn't have to be adversarial, Matt. What I was pointing to is the fact that these text messages are from April 10th of 2023, and the reporting on the text messages is from February 16th of 2024. That's the year gap that I'm referring to. So help me understand why why is it that there was the release the the reporting on. The, the, the title of this, uh, this New Republic article, for instance, called Twitter Files, Matt Taibbi says Elon Musk sent him unhinged messages. That reporting happened in February of 2024, but the messages themselves are dated of uh, April of 2023, almost a year before. But Brianna, you know this because, and, and, and again, I, I, I can't stress this enough. I know this because you've referenced the article uh, that I wrote. The day that that happened, I put out uh, a, an article on my site called Meet the Censored colon me uh, that detailed everything that happened, including the fact that I had been placed under a blanket search ban uh, and that uh, my own Twitter files had been taken down temporarily from, uh, from Twitter. Uh, in fact, I had to explain this at some length to the audience so that they understood why I was uploading the twi tw uh, Twitter files on my site because they had been taken down uh, from X. The only thing that was new about that article that you referenced was that I was trying to tweak Elon maybe into communicating by releasing the actual snapshots of the, of the, the text exchange. There was no new information in there except for some of his, you know, behavioral stuff, but the, the the stuff about the censorship, I was I quoted directly from that the day that it happened. So again, uh, there's no substantive way you can claim that I held back any information uh, about that incident uh, until this year. I've been I, I I've been talking about it. Just I, the only, in fact, the only reason I don't talk about it more is because I'm I'm afraid of boring people about it. I, I think be just confusing a couple of different things here. Of course, we covered and we've talked at length about uh, the kind of the big blow up in and of itself about Substack and Elon having this kind of bizarre misunderstanding of what Substack was and feeling like it was somehow competing with Twitter and wanting you not to publish on your own uh, Substack. Of course, we covered that. And I, I that is not what I was referring to. As I just mentioned, I'm talking about this gap between the um, the, the text, the obviously dissonant exchange that you were having with Elon Musk, in which you articulated a concern that you know you had been withholding criti criticisms of Elon Musk, and he didn't seem to be well, kind of responding to that. that. Yeah, that, that's a different thing, and that's not what you were you were saying in your show. You were saying that I held back from the world that that an influential journalist had been censored. Go, go back and listen wait, to the, wait a look at the but, transcript but that's of your what I'm own referring show. To, I'm referring to your quote here. I, and I wonder if you could just, because I think it might be a little boring for the audience for it to, to become some um, interpersonal dispute between us. And also, I, I, I don't I understand I don't feel you want to move on to this other thing, but, but that, well, that's, but that's no, not what yeah, happened. I specifically you, you quoted... Said, I, excuse me, I'm sorry, but I specifically quoted this in the in the episode, right, in the in the segment. So I just wondered if you could respond to that, because I didn't feel like I was misrepresenting you by simply quoting your own tweet to Elon Musk, right? And what you said on April 10th of 2023, Elon, I've repeatedly declined to criticize you and have nothing to do with your beef with Substack. And, and, and that, that's my all. understanding of that, go ahead. My understanding of that was that, right, you were still hoping to have a productive relationship with Elon at that point for the publishing of additional Twitter files, and that's why you might have said, I, I didn't find that a particularly damning thing to say, but go ahead. We, we, we can get into that, and I'm happy to talk about the, the, the reasoning for that, but just to be absolutely clear, clear beyond, Brianna, that is not what you said in your show. You were talking about me withholding information about the, the, the censorship. What information? I did, I did, you, you said I, I, I withheld for a year that an influential journalist had been censored uh, on Twitter. 
I, and I, I didn't. I talked about it immediately. I've been talking about it nonstop. Every time I mention Elon on Twitter, I talk about how he's stepping on my account and, and deamplifying. I'm, I'm genuinely confused, and I perhaps don't have it as a. I obviously don't have the kind of mental capacity and encyclopedic memory that you've demonstrated in all of your public appearances and in your reporting over the years. So I apologize if I genuinely just don't remember what you're alluding to. What I do remember is wanting to understand what it was, what was being withheld, as I, as I, understand, I understand it. And my, and my, as I'm sitting here today, what I believe and what I think the criticism that is legitimate of how you handled this is, as opposed to all the illegitimate criticism that we talked about at length on this show, is whether as what you were declining to criticize without having a better understanding of what that was. Maybe we can just talk about what that was and we can see maybe it was things that are legitimate to withhold if you think it's going to continue a relationship where you're getting a lot of important journalism, uh, journalistic uh, um, uh, content out of it, right? Or maybe it's not. And I think what would be clarifying is to have some insight into what you meant by decline to criticize you. Because that, that seems to me to be where the bulk of the No, that seems to be what is. you want to talk about. But let's just be clear. I'll, I'll, I'll be done with this in, in 18 seconds, OK? Just to be clear, you made factual mistakes about when I, when I re revealed that I was being censored, uh, you uh, made a mistake in saying that I haven't, I, I still haven't criticized them. I haven't criticized them over the last year. Uh, you, you made a mistake in saying the Twitter file searches were not done. You, you made a mistake in saying that there was one cache. I don't know where you got that from. It you was, said a, it was I, a mistake, it's baby. I, I have no interest in denying that. But, but I okay, would like well, to talk about that a little bit, though, because I'm when you came done. online. There's, there's, there's more. Okay. Uh, you, 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 Look, well, go, go ahead. Go, we, we, I mean, we had you on because we wanted to make sure we get to all of I mean, this. I, I would have, I would have been happy with a correction, but, 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 but since you're not going to do that, um, you know, okay. The other, the other two were, oh. you were saying that uh, essentially that I, that I had done searches only for one side and not the other. Well, I Matt, actually let's did, talk about I that. Could I you didn't, you, I didn't say you had done searches for one side or the other. I said I had you on my show, and you got very bris bristly with me at that time as well. I wish we could have these conversations without them turning into these weird personal vendettas. I think we'd have a lot more productivity in this space if we did. Let's not have but any wait a minute. personal vendettas. When you, but... Robbie, this is not necessary for you to intervene at this juncture. What I said to you on my show was I asked you if you had ever done a search about Bernie Sanders specifically and the censorship against the left kind of Bernie Sanders movement back in 2016. And you seemed, and I'm, I wish we had pulled up a clip, but people can go and, and look for it on themselves on Bad Faith Podcast, but you seemed almost kind of surprised and caught off guard by that question. And you answered truthfully, no. And I said, well, that, that seems to me from my own subjective political interest, they don't have to be interests that you share, obviously, but from my own subjective po uh, political interest as a leftist, a kind of curious choice. Is that not an accurate? Well, yes, but you're implying that I was looking in, one, in the other direction no, and not I in that direction. Anything. I wasn't looking in either direction. I said a factual statement, which was that you admitted that you hadn't searched specifically for kind of Bernie-related material. That is That's true, all but I, said, I didn't, right? But, but I, but I wasn't looking for information on the right either. I was, I was looking at the DHS, FBI, ODNI. Uh, the Global Engagement Center, the Election Integrity Partnership. Those are the kinds of searches I was doing. The stuff that was turning up is the stuff that was turning up. Uh, and just, just to get this out of the way, you, said, you also said that I hadn't reported on this issue, uh, you know, I've only reported on this issue in one direction, that I, that I haven't, you know, the, that mainstream media, um, it, you know, th there aren't people in mainstream media who are, who are doing coverage of this issue from, you know, the concerns uh, of the left side. I've been doing that for years. I've been constantly writing about censorship of, of, of figures on the left. Yeah, I think you're right, far, you're right about that, Matt. But, but if I could articulate, I think what the concern is and what Zed was saying and what others have been saying, it's because you've done so much of that good reporting. And I said this in the episode last time. It's because you've done so much of that reporting from the left perspective that is so important and so valuable in the left sphere that there is a frustration that that reporting hasn't seemed to continue uh, since, the, since the last few years or so. And so when you DM'd me about that your concerns about what I said, but Matt, that when you, when you DM'd me years. about your concerns about the last segment, you linked several articles, the most recent of which 
was from 2022. There was another from 2018. Sure. The, 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 the one about the labor files was just a few months ago. And I, I that was a huge series that I, that I invested a lot in. Uh, and well, the, the, yeah. the, the Twitter files themselves were full of material about the left. But let's let's well, t let's talk about by. it. Maybe I just am not aware of it. What Twitter file materials is full uh, were uh, germane to the interests of the left? I'd love to hear about the, them. The issue with consortium, for instance. But what's and, the issue with who, consortium? Who, yeah, and by the way, I I just wrote about the you know the the, the news guard suit involving. Uh, consortium and how they're suing. Uh, I'd love to hear about it. What, what's the deal there? NewsGuard, as well as uh, you know, some some right leaning organizations. It's two different suits, but they're suing NewsGuard, which is a, as I mentioned uh, in 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 my testimony. But in fact, the reason that that consortium, one of the reasons that they're able to file a suit against NewsGuard, uh, is because. Uh, I mentioned NewsGuard in my testimony as a Pentagon-funded organization, and in my correspondence with them, they they admitted that they were essentially doing work for uh, an Air Force intelligence service, and this would this turned into the uh, part of the basis for NewsGuard's suit against um, uh, you know against, against NewsGuard. But l leaving that aside, let's go to the issue that you want to talk about, like why I didn't. Uh, why I wasn't criticizing Elon Musk during the period uh, of the Twitter files. It, when we started that project, and when I first saw the actual material, not, not after the first Twitter files, because that material wasn't terribly interesting, but within a couple of days after that, I realized that this stuff was, this was material of uh, tremendous historical importance. And I made uh, a, a difficult calculation. This is an unprecedented ethical uh, situation. Noth it, nothing like this had ever happened in journalism before. Uh, we had a source who was difficult to gauge. And I made a decision early on that the goal of the entire project was just to get as much stuff as possible and hang in there as long as possible. And that, that was part of my frustration when, when you had me on the first time, is I kept, feeling, I kept feeling like saying, do you want me to get the stuff or not? Because if you're trying to get me to, to talk about Elon or criticize him or do this or that, um, okay, I'm, you know, I might end up doing that, but we might not get the stuff. And, and as a reporter, I instantly made the calculation that getting this material was more important than anything, including, to be frank, my own reputation. So I, I did hang in there for quite a long time. I got an incredible amount of material, and it was it, it was important. It, this issue of censorship went from zero to the Supreme Court in like a year, uh, in large part thanks to these documents that yeah, for, uh, for Elon sure. Musk turned over. But can I ask about and then um, we're going to have Weiss. So can you get in one more thing? Barry and... Weiss making a different, very different decision than you. Obviously, she criticized, I think, kind of mildly, uh, Elon Musk's choice to censor the Elon Jets account and was immediately booted from the project. Did you feel like that was a sort of a, a, an intimidating warning across the bow? And did you consider whether there could have been a kind of collective um, effort to say, okay, well, if you're going to fire by Barry Weiss from this project? You'll you'll have to you'll have to fire all of us because we agree with the value that uh, uh, Barry Weiss is standing up for right now, which is that you have to either be for free speech broadly and universally or not. Yeah, I, I, I when when the thing with Barry happened, um, look, we were all texting each other, but. Uh, Frankly, Brianna, for me, this is not a difficult calculation. Uh, standing up to Elon Musk, let's say we all stood up to Elon Musk. We stood as one. We rose as one and said, we will not do this story uh, unless you repudiate, um, you know, uh, you stand up for free speech. Uh, and then he booted us all off and we never got any Twitter files, which is what happened after he got in a spat with me. Uh, what would the value of that have been? It would have been zero. This, the Twitter files was a historically in, in, uh, important story, and I'm sorry. I'm yeah. as, as well, a journalist. Do you regret I, then? I, do you regret I, I, uh, arguing I, with him about the Substack then, and perhaps being able to get more out of the Twitter files? Because eventually you had your own line, right? 
there's nothing I could have done about the Substack thing. They came to me and said, do you want to move to, tw to Twitter subs? And I said, no, because there, there was an ethical problem there. I could, and frankly, I was, I was trying to protect the reporting. I couldn't, I mean, I would have moved to Twitter subs if there wasn't an ethical issue there. If I did do that, that uh, people would have said that I had a financial relationship to Elon Musk and they would have invalidated all the reporting. So I couldn't do it. I was put into a, a, a yes or no situation. Hmm. I had to say no. And when I said no, that was the end. Yeah. So and what do you say so to the, the Palestine criticism just quickly? Because that was a big part of what Zed Jelani was arguing about, that he feels like you were so amazing on Palestine years ago, but haven't been as vocal I don't know about what he's it talking post October about me being amazing on Palestine. I've never written about Palestine except in the, in the, in the, in the context of censorship, which I have written about repeatedly. But I think that's the so issue. I, in contemporary censorship, did you, do you have any thoughts on that quickly before we wrap? Yeah, I've, as I've always said, the Palestinians are pretty much the canary in the coal mine for for any new form, any new censorship technology. And, you know, we, we saw we, it started as early as 2014, 2015 with the Internet stuff, and it's only gotten worse. It's going to get worse. But that's that's the template that I'm worried about happening here. Uh, and but I, it's not like I haven't said anything about that. I have repeatedly. Matt, thank you so much for coming here. Uh, set the record straight. We really appreciate it, and we've loved having you on and featuring your reporting in the past. And I'm happy to continue this conversation with you at length over on Bad Faith Podcast if you're ever interested. I really have no interest in uh, getting things wrong, and I do appreciate you coming here to clarify. Thanks again. All right. Thank you very much.